Welcome back, and we have the illustrious Lord Sterling, Tim Alexander, and he's got some pretty frightening news here. And by the way, we don't put this on to quote frighten you. We put it on to get a reality check, and the first thing you need to do, if you are not a believer, is to suddenly and quickly get the idea that if there isn't a God, you're in a lot worse trouble than you already are in. And number two, if you are a believer, get down on your hands and your face and cry out to the Most High God because we're on the sawtooth edge of World War III. World War III started September 11th, and we were coming up to the 11th anniversary, and they have a special party planned for this 11th anniversary, don't they, oh, yeah. Tim? Why don't you tell us what uh, they're up to? Well, you know, I've spent the last several hours uh, preparing to update my blog, and I just uh, hit the update button a, a couple minutes ago and I kept the the worst articles to to last either by design or, or what other and I'll tell you I just I sit here and say oh my lord you know uh, okay let, let me uh, the US UK and France have elite commando units with C-130 aircraft standing by in Jordan and Syria to seize Syrian chemical weapons and another article uh, Pentagon, the plans are in place to seize Syria uh, chemical weapons. Now, uh, this all sounds good. Okay, we've got specially trained commandos, and so do the British and the French, and we're going to go in and we're going to seize those chemical warheads. Uh, okay, let's uh, take a deep breath and uh, ask a couple pertinent questions like, oh, how are we going to do that? And we're going to stick those things in our back pocket and walk out? Uh, we are talking about warheads that fit on intermediate range ballistic missiles and scud type missiles uh, warheads that weigh tons we're talking about bombs uh, binary uh, bombs and and other weapons that weigh um, thousands of pounds I mean, anywhere from 500 to a couple thousand pounds each with the multiple submunition canisters we're talking about 152 uh, millimeter uh, binary chemical warheads that weigh hundreds of pounds. Now, and we're talking about lots of these, many, many, many thousands of these, because uh, Syria has one of the largest chemical warfare uh, uh, stockpiles on the face of this earth. Right. So in other words, you're good at math, and these people aren't. So they would need a lot, a heck of a lot of C-130s doing an awful lot of sorties back and forth to move even a fraction of these well, weapons. Well, and and in, in, in the meantime, they'd be fighting the Syrian army and air force. But uh, what I'm and the Russians this and the Russians would be manning these air. Well, yeah, yeah Russia and China. Uh, this is a psychop fantasy. This is this is a lie that is being fed to the American and British and French and Western peoples and the peoples of the world. Uh, Obama has, you know, threatened to go in and seize him. So has the British Prime Minister Major. Yeah, the red line okay. comments. Uh, analyze that because right. tell us about but red line. Wait, wait. Look, it, it, when you uh, the devil's in the detail, and in this case, the devil's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you know, we are talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of tons of material. Sorry, uh, a few thousand commandos uh, pair dropping into Syria. I don't care how well trained they are, they're not going to be able to pull this off. Here's what they can pull off. They can pull off the start of the general Middle Eastern War, i.e. the war that will be the trigger mechanism for the Third World War. That they can do, and that's what this is all about, and we are literally at the precipice now. Yeah, exactly, and, and it could well happen before the election. We have three things that are converging here. We have the imminent collapse of the, uh, collapse of the European economy, the imminent collapse of states and cities uh, around America and around the world, going bankrupt. And, the, and then the American and global economies. Right. And then we have the, the impending war in the Middle East that's going to choke off the Strait of Hormuz and cut off the, the blood supply of energy to China and these other countries like Japan that now rely on oil and gas coming out of there or the effect of it driving the price through the ceiling. We're on the edge of what's called a fiscal cliff next year, which is going to take out $500 billion of the American economy because we know that if Obama gets back in, there'll probably be a, a Republican Congress that will have gridlock and they'll never accomplish anything, including repealing these stupid tax increases that are going to kill business. And yet Obama wants to spend money like a drunken sailor on another world war. 
It's just insanity. Well, okay, and now let me give you another little little tidbit. Um, yesterday, there was an attempt to assassinate the uh, chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff. Yes, you mentioned that. Tell us about that. Well, I, um, I if you, if you go to my site and look at the first article uh, that was linked yesterday. Now this is aside uh, from General Dempsey. Wrote the article. Yeah. Uh, I happened to uh, get it not from his site, but f- uh, from Press TV, which uh, uh, ran it. But uh, uh, well, I tell you, it, it, it's hard to, uh, to sum it up. Plan War ran, and the general who said no. Uh, right. Evidently, General Dempsey, who's uh, a U.S. Army four-star general, and he's chairman of the American Joint Chiefs of Staff, he flew into Tel Aviv, and he had it out with Netanyahu, uh, the Israeli prime minister, and said that uh, his armed forces wanted no part of Netanyahu scheming against uh, Iran. Uh, he got on his C-17, which is a very large transport plane, and it, it, uh, the boys at the top sometimes use our transport planes, but they have special interiors that they can put in, and they're quite luxurious. But then they can yank them out the back, and then it's, it's back to being a, C, uh, a transport plane. He flew into uh, our main base in Afghanistan, uh, Backham Air Force Base. Now... They that particular base is the most secure base uh, on Earth. We've spent two billion dollars in technology on this, the perimeter alone at that base. Uh, the the someone supposedly uh, the rank heads in Afghanistan managed to launch on him, damage his plane, almost blew the plane out of the sky. Um, if you believe, and they, that, and they seriously injured two of the technicians there too, didn't they? Oh yes. If you believe that they had the technology to find out when he was coming in and to launch, I have a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. No, that sounds like a CIA and Mossad operation to me. I would say Mossad in this case. Where I, they have it, intelligence information access, which of course we know with the Promise software, Israel has a backdoor to all of our intelligence information absolutely. at all times. I mean, I look. I, I've been in aerospace. I, I've seen situations where the chairman of an aerospace design bureau uh, was absolutely astounded at, at something an Israeli general just told him about his company and what his company was doing. Uh, I mean, they are everywhere. They spy on us. But uh, Dempsey uh, ticked off Netanyahu, and Netanyahu tried to have him killed. That's what this article says, and. Uh, uh, it may very well be the case. In any case, we are, are literally now at death's door uh, in the Middle East. Uh, and God help us, because if this thing gets started, uh, it's not going to end well. Well, exactly. And, and I don't know how much death. In fact, I'm predicting this, and not knowing how much it'll be, but whenever it happens, whether it's before or after the election, there'll be enough damage, destruction, death, and, and carnage that the world will beg for a Middle East treaty to partition the state to put a clamps on not only the Muslim countries but Israel's nuclear weapons to try to have a peace treaty for 1-7 as it says so we're probably within months of major destruction or weeks and within and probably Israel will, will, there, there's a snowball's chance in Hades of Israel either allowing uh, or giving up any of her nuclear weapons. They're not that's going to. They're not going to give them up. But that's not going to happen. And of course, it won't happen inside the government because they have, they have a what I call a choke chain on all of our politicians, our intelligence uh, experts, etc. In fact, the large amount of our intelligence uh, is actually contracted to Israeli companies. And security. Exactly. It's pretty crazy, and again, it's not for the health of the Israeli population either, because if they start the shooting war, they're well, going to get a lot why more... the Israeli generals mutinied three weeks ago. They were supposed to do it, then they, they wouldn't, and now they're trying to get British, American, and uh, French generals to do what the Israelis would. Welcome back, and uh, <clears throat> coming up at the bottom of the hour, we'll do a, a quick update with Chris Harris, but we'll have lots of topics to cover here today. Uh, 
you know, when we do this uh, every Thursday, and you do reports on our live stream channels available for all of our customers the last six months, people need a grasp. This research is painful. We don't, we're not, uh, you know, prophets of doom. We're trying to tell people what's really happening so they can prepare for it spiritually first, physically, emotionally, whatever, and they need to be ready for what can happen. Uh, we've got crazies. We need to file lawsuits, and we need to also make sure we vote. If all the people who are pro-life, and I can tell you right now, Having looked at the at the odds, we cannot have a second term of Obama. And people try to say there's two sides of the same coin. Well, Romney's not perfect, but Mormons are going to have a choke chain on his neck because a former Mormon bishop, you may or may not know this, Mormons are by far more conservative than most other groups in terms of pro-life issues. And even in these stupid gaffes he's made, he says he's pro-life now with exceptions. R Ryan is pro-life, okay? And he makes the exception for rape. All of most so-called pro-life people, and I had arguments about this in pro-life conferences, they make exceptions for rape, for even for Down syndrome or birth defects. You know, rape was the one that was the most common. And only about maybe 1% of people basically are truly what we call pro-life no matter what the reason of how the person was, was done. If you set the bar so high that you're going to get a second term of Obama, the consequences will be a Sunni Muslim Satanist in the White House that will bring in a, a uh, Marxist-Leninist regime that will completely destroy America. On, we, on abortion, the only thing that I, w that, that I would really have, a, and I'm vehemently opposed to it, that I would have a problem with is if they told me, and of course my, my poor wife's dad, uh, she died 13 years ago, but if, they, if I was a man and they told me my wife was, was literally going to die unless they aborted the child, and that, yeah. by the way, is rare as hen's teeth anymore. Well, it doesn't occur. Let me explain as a doctor, okay? I know as a doctor it doesn't occur, and I'll tell you why. If if you have an extra two, if you have a tubal pregnancy, it's not a normal pregnancy. You've got to do surgery to remove that tubal pregnancy. But if it's an intrauterine pregnancy and it's normally uh, present there, there is no certainty, not even cancer. In fact, if you do a surgical removal and an abortion, while a woman has cancer, lymphoma or whatever, she's far more likely to die because her immune system crashes immediately after you remove the, uh, the fetus. Her immune system is boosted up to fight the cancer during pregnancy. As soon as you remove that fetus, she's going to die real fast. And I've seen it, okay? So people say there's exceptions. There are none. There are none. Zero. Nada. Nit. Zil. It's another one of these straw man arguments by people who are not qualified to speak on it, who have never done or referred abortions, never been participatory, never did an analysis of the data, and I presented major papers on this or talked to other experts that have done it as well. The real issue is this. We don't only have a pro-abortion president, but pro-eugenics president. We have a president that has, couldn't manage a McDonald's in Tokyo or an ice cream parlor sitting on a beach at 100 degrees. He is an idiot, and the people around him are control free because I said in the first hour, all liberals are, number one, control freaks. Number two, they are sociopaths. And number three, they're liars. And that's not a conditional thing. 100% have all those three characteristics. And Obama's well, in space. He's uh, the also uh, the the ultimate abortion is is about to be dropped on us if these characters begin uh, a war, which well, it they looks were. like. I mean, we're we're extraordinarily close. Uh, Syria and Iran dominoes lead to world war or something. Uh, uh, if it's not world war, it's going to be so horrific. Well, uh, maybe you should put a sign on your website that you're never too old to be aborted, and it shows a picture of Obama with an, <laughs> with a with with a, with a big finger thumb on the button, ready to push the nuclear button, and he's got a surgeon's gown on, he's ready to pull the mask up, because we, sitting in our homes in America, our military, our Navy, sitting as sitting ducks in the, in the Mediterranean and the uh, Persian Gulf, are sitting there ready to be aborted by nuclear and advanced weapons, because when they start the shooting war, it doesn't matter whether you're coming down the birth canal or you're blown to bits in your home by a nuclear flash, we're going to die. And if they release a, a, the health storm on, on Iran and Syria, I can tell you, if I was Syrian or Iranian, and I knew my entire family and my posterity were going to be wiped out, the enemy is going to die. Well, okay, so I can tell you, the, the knowing the psychology of your destruction, and, and, and this and is what I've been warning about for years, because as soon as many years ago, when I realized that uh, the Iranians had, had after the, the fall, 
of uh, uh, the Soviet Union had went in and, and hired as many of the Soviet scientists, advanced bio-war scientists, and bought as many, much of the technology as they could. I thought, oh, my Lord. I mean, examples is, of, of advanced weapons smuggled out as well by these scientists. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is uh, y- 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 most people have no concept of how dangerous this stuff is. Well, the Russians and had an entire city of a quarter. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Bill, most countries that, that, that engage in advanced biological warfare production, they generally use it only to produce biotoxins, which have a longer uh, a life in the field uh, than even the most persistent chemical uh, gas. You're talking about fungal mycotoxins. What the what? Russians did during the Cold War, though, and they had bioreactors as high as three-story buildings. They had an entire city of a quarter million plus people and technicians who were just scientists, technicians, and their families alone. And they were prepared to nuke that city if they had to. Right, and that city, by the way, just scientists and technicians, not including their family, was a quarter million people, and all they did was make the the biological weapons of Armageddon. That's all they did. Yes, they were uh, light years ahead of us. Now, we're light years ahead of them in many other ways, but but this is, is so incredibly dangerous. But what Iran has done is they not only have this this uh, biologically produced bio uh, toxins but they have doomsday weapons that is they have produced who knows hundreds probably uh genetically engineered viruses that are self-replicating and use human beings as vectors and basically wipe out most people they infect and infect people very easily that's a doomsday weapon you can't make that kind of weapon uh really not to be a doomsday because even if you develop vaccines for it once you release that weapon into the wild and because it's genetically engineered it's going to be unstable to begin with it's going to mutate and it's going to be able to it's going to come back and kill your own people no, you it, know that so yeah. basically if you make this it's a doomsday weapon and if you use it you use it because your people have already been wiped out and you're going after the rest of the human population exactly now uh, we had a comment in the latest newsletter by Joel Skousen last week that uh, dis uh, all the quote major broadcasters including this show about the idea that we're saying that financial Armageddon is coming it's here. We're in a depression. We have a meltdown of banks pending. We have meltdown of cities well, and towns. Well, the, 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 the Federal Reserve and our, our Commander-in-Chief has said that, that, that it's a recession and, and it's getting no. better. And, and in January, they by the way, January first, January 2013, when we, if we have this a fool in chief and a, a gridlock with Republicans probably still in control of Congress, if he gets reelected, we'll have what's called a fiscal cliff. And we have that on top of an impending war that's going to occur either right before or right after the elections because both Romney and Obama have promised the Israelis to provide protection. Now, I think Romney, if he has two clues and has better advisors than Obama, he will realize, like General Dempsey says, this is not a good idea to do war. Well, the Israeli generals stopped World War III three weeks ago. And it looks like Dempsey tried to stop it and almost got killed yesterday. Yeah. For his efforts, we'll see. We're but we're close. We're, we're close. really close. When that kind of thing happens, you know that there's an internal fight in the global elite. Going live. Welcome back, and we have our latest update with Chris Harris. So we'll be giving us a quick update today. Just give the highlights. Storage of highly contaminated waste still an issue at Fukushima. Uh, Chris is going to give us an update on that. Japanese government set to end nuclear power entirely within two decades. Gosh. Uh, then we have a report debris landing on Alaskan shores quadruples over last year. Quadruples, we're talking about large docks, ships, all kinds of garbage showing up there. And Three Mile Island, uh, one unit uh, shuts down due to reactor coolant leak. I said before, 100% of all reactors release tritium. Nine major reactors, we talked about this last week with Chris, uh, have problems with either temperature control outside the reactor so they, can, they don't have control, had difficulty with major leaks of tritium or other station blackout issues that are not being dealt with, uh, and, and uh, backup power systems. 
the nuclear industry is working with too sharp a pencil and the operation of the frontal lobes of these so-called engineers is working for the industry. Now that they've shut down Jazco, the previous director of the NRC, we're getting almost nothing positive coming out of the NRC saying that, oh my gosh, we've got to deal with extreme weather. Across America, we had extreme weather all summer, drought, extreme storms are going to be coming this fall and winter. We're not prepared for station shutdowns. We're not prepared for major leaks like the uh, Three Mile Island leak that's sitting literally. Uh, that Three Mile Island leak is, you know, remembers the old Three Mile Island re- release or the uh, big reactor sitting outside New York City that uh, is sitting literally on fault lines. So, Chris, give us the update on all these issues. What's going on in Fukushima? Because I'm seeing my radiation detector starting to fluctuate again, which tells me, as you said before the show, that it's the 61st release, which means what they do is after a period of time they decide, well, we've filtered as much as we can. We're just going to release it to nature. So they release it to the Pacific Ocean and the troposphere, which blows it eastward toward North America and around the Northern Hemisphere. Well, one of the processes is that it's an evaporative process, and so that um, I've been looking into what they're actually doing, and a lot of the a lot of the treatment comes from taking this highly contaminated water, you know, with the ten to the fifth decorels per you know a cubic centimeter or so, and they're you know one of the things you do is you evaporate out of much of the water. What you're trying to do is you're trying to capture all the worst possible stuff, and then you then you filter that out, and whatever's left over. You know, whatever's whatever's clean enough to release, yeah, you, you can go ahead and do that because it's not detectable. But you've also released a lot of stuff atmospherically, so you're probably seeing some of that. Also, it gets pumped back into the reactor. What whatever is not clean enough to release gets pumped back into the because it still needs cooling. You know, like units one through three still need cooling, and uh, there's a lot of water accumulated in the basement. There's a lot of it that's just where it's coming from. And uh, well, how did it get to the basement of that and the turbine building? Now I've heard people say, well, you know, it's not, um, you know, it, the, the disaster wasn't so horrific because uh, you know there's a, there's a lot of tsunami waters. Well, then how come there's so much? How come the water in the turbine building is so highly contaminated? You shouldn't see very much in, in there at all. And that's where you're seeing. Uh, that's where they're taking suction on from some of these uh, from the filter yeah. trains. So the the end product of this is the stuff that you can't yeah. possibly do anything with. Yeah. It's, it's called sludge, and you've got yourself of over 150,000 gallons of this stuff called sludge. I don't know how you ever ever are going to even move this stuff. But you don't want it to go anywhere, and you want to protect it so it doesn't leak into the ocean or any, anywhere, for heaven's sakes. This is the right. worst. Right. When you say doesn't leak, you're talking about 100,000 years, right? Uh, for as long as, yeah, that, that sounds about right. I mean, I don't know how to do it. I wouldn't know how to even move such a... Uh, you know, such a mess. It's really a well. What they need to do is they need to turn the the solid waste, uh, sort of into a solid waste, and they need to transport it in proper uh, trains or ships that can carry it to a deep tin mine, well below the water line that'll stay there for billions of years. The problem is nobody's had an international consortium to put the money into properly. Number one, filter this instead of quote releasing it into the into the oceans. They know if they put ground penetrating radar or put mini subs out there, they'd see that these steam jets were releasing it into the ocean floor. They even talked about putting concrete for hundreds of square miles off the coast of Fukushima Daiichi to literally seal the radioactive steam jets that are in the ocean floor coming from the Daiichi plant. Uh, what have they done in that regard? Have they done anything there? Uh, well, they are trying to prevent the intrusion of groundwater by diverting some of it. Listen, we talked about this like, oh, like a year ago. Like right. One thing you've got to do is you've got to go ahead and try to somehow keep the rainwater out and if you read that pdf that i sent you just just today and it was just like what today's pdf they're right. getting a, a terrible problem with intrusion from groundwater and intrusion from rainwater which goes in clean and it comes out contaminated so right. you know uh like i don't come on here and say anything that's uh you know, just to be dramatic and everything else it's, uh, no, that, it's that, all it's all in the, in the solid documents what about the, uh, the this article about the nuclear power going to end in two decades i thought most of the plants were already turned off are they actually crazy enough to turn them back on again uh well crazy or otherwise uh they are doing inspections at at least uh, two of them there's a pretty aggressive schedule for them they're doing actual walk downs to see what kind of damage from last year's earthquake and it will they will 
make an assessment whether it's uh, feasible to go ahead and restart that, and that's even well, in today's TEPCO's report. Uh, well, Chris, uh, before, before I forget, I, I want to ask, exactly why in the world would they build the the, uh, the the nuclear reactors right by the ocean? I mean, there's no reason to build them on the beach, next to the beach, next to the ocean, is there? They want to have access to water is what they they do that. But again, it's like the uh, I call pre crime, just like Minority reported on you. This is a nuclear pre crime. But but there's earthquake zones everywhere. They they've had tsunamis for millennia uh, in, in Japan. I don't I don't really know. It defies logic. They, they can even. Uh, they can even do topography. They can use geothermal energy and replace all their need for nuclear reactors and even their need for fossil fuels. They call them, well, they're, aren't they're fossil, they're abiotic. Uh, nuclear generated fuels from the bowels of the nuclear reactor we call Earth. Um, then the, other, the last report, of course, is uh, debris landing on Alaskan shores. Um, is, this, is any of this debris showing up radioactive, or what, what's the, what is Alaska doing about it? I know reports that are showing up radioactive, but I do know that if it's making its way across across the ocean, then anything that any currents that are radioactive would also, by by, necess, by necessity, would also be showing up there too. So that's really indicative of the way the currents are flowing, and if they are coming to the west coast and it's all up and down. We're talking about within a couple of days there were tons. First, there was nothing on that beach. Right. Uh, I forgot where it was. I think it was Washington State. Oh, Alaska, excuse me. And uh, two days later, there were tons of debris, mostly foam, things like that come off of docks, you know, that, that help. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, plastic and foam and, uh, and and other d- dock debris, yeah, marine debris. Yeah, uh, and it's, and it's really just you know just to say you know. Well, I, I want you to stay there uh, for for a moment, uh, if you can, Chris, because we want to get into another nuclear release that's going to happen here shortly. We're calling another pre-crime. We've got the impending nuclear attack with special forces on Syria and Iran. And the Bashir reactor. Now, you know the Bashir reactor is probably one of the largest reactor sites on the planet. It's been estimated by the, the uh, scientists and, and doctors for social responsibility that if they hit that reactor while well, fully fueled and in full operation, which it is now, manned by Russian scientists and technicians, the radiation release will be monumental. It'll be far bigger than Chernobyl or even the release from Fukushima. Um, what, uh, what what do you see, uh, Chris, as a danger if they start a nuclear war in the Middle East, basically? Just what you said. Please do not strike any facility that has any enriched uranium in it because, just you know, just as you said, it's going to cause a release. That it's, well, first of all, you know, it's big or bigger or big S. I don't think there's any way to measure it right now how much uh, how much uh, would... By the way, there's a, there's an well, ancient... Demona will be hit by the Syrians and the Iranians and Hezbollah. And Demona is a thermal nuclear weapons manufacturing facility as well as a nuclear reactor. Yeah. Uh, I've heard estimates that they have a right around 800 multiple targeted missiles underground at Demona. Uh, and a weapons facility that's literally second to none in America, Russia. Uh, for making nuclear weapons in Israel. So, well, they use laser enrichment. Yeah, I know. They're very advanced. And unfortunately, they got a lot of bad stuff down there. Very- Welcome back. And uh, when you hear about Obamacare, we talked about that with Daniel Weber in the first hour with AMAC, AMAC.us. When you listen to Tim, you go to his daily blog, europebusiness.blogspot.com, or just Google Lord Sterling, S-T-I-R-L-I-N-G. When you look at the reports we post up that are actually from published NRC reports, nuclear reports, and journalism by Chris Harris, and inside analysis, things are, it's like the movie network. Things are worse than bad. Uh, but again, the glimmer is, number one, if you're a believer, you know that no matter that we're inside a fire pot, literally burning the, the bricks of ancient Babylon seven times hotter than it needs to be to burn bricks, that the fourth man, the Most High God, is with us. And what people need to do is to start, number one, realizing prayer is good, but prayer with action is better, which means you got to get out there and make sure you vote. Number one, we cannot have a second term of Obama, no matter what. Number two, we need to start taking legal action on things like smart meters. We need to tell our politicians we don't want war. 
We're going to realize when they come back from the recess, we need to tell our congressmen and senators, restrain this maniac. He needs to be impeached right now because he's literally giving a green light to the Israelis. And only a tiny minority, the majority of Israelis, have enough sense to realize this is suicidal and stupid. The Russians and Chinese are begging us, let's not start this. The, uh, the, even inside Israel, so now the latest move you said, uh, Tim, is that they're trying to convince the British, the Americans, and the French that those crazy generals, that they need to proceed with their elite forces to well, come they, in and quote, they, grab they the weapons. They almost killed the, Amer- the, the top American general yesterday. And uh, if you believe that it was simply some ragheads uh, that got lucky and threw a $2 billion security system, uh, I have a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. Uh, he, he, he went into Israel. He told Israel that the, uh, that the military elite, that the, the, the generals in America were not going to go along with Netanyahu's drive towards uh, a global war. And Netanyahu who no doubt uh, tried to have him killed. Uh, That's what this article says. It makes sense to me. Uh, And they missed, barely. And uh, so we're we're at the point. Three weeks ago, the Israeli generals put their feet uh, their foot down and said no to war. Uh, now they've they've rewrote the script. So it's the U.S., U.K., and France uh, units are on standby. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, unless the generals say no. Uh, the people at the top in the uh, France, in, in the United Kingdom, and the United States are going to take us into a horrific nightmare that is beyond what most people can even begin to understand because they don't understand the military technology. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you know, if they hit the Mona, uh, if they hit the, the uh, Bashir reactor, etc., that alone will make Fukushima look like a Sunday school romp. And, uh, I mean, and it, it's going to be far worse than that. They're going to close the Strait of Hormuz. Uh, forget about gasoline. It might cost 15 a gallon. It might cost 20 a gallon. Forget about the economy. Forget about eating. Well, that's why I tell people that they need to get themselves or prepare wise food. They need to have water stored for their home for at least three weeks. <clears throat> they need to be prepared with self defense. They need to start networking with their neighbors so they can share skill sets and, and start practicing. You don't need to quote a formal militia, but people need to be prepared right now because whether it's in America, Canada, or other nations, things are gonna the wheels are gonna come off this. And when I hear people like Joel Skousen say after all his preparedness books and so on, oh there isn't an end to this economically uh, January, which is only a few months away, the fiscal cliff has been published by the General Accounting Office. We have a report that just came out today on that. We have issues in the Middle East. We've got issues in Europe. We have the uh, number of state and, and other governments that are going bankrupt. And yet these idiots are pushing all the wrong buttons. They're saying rather than increasing credit and letting house mortgage rates float down to a lower price and allow people to keep their equity, instead of giving money to to small business to make more jobs, what we have is the government's planning on a major tax increase. And we have a little hope here now that we have Paul Ryan coming in with his uh, plan for budgets that will actually get some rationality that may bring some common sense back. But it's a it's a little late. If we get another term well, of Obama, I mean, you, we're have, you have a madman at a wheel of a of a bus loaded with people, and instead of tra- and he's headed towards a cliff, and instead of turning the wheel and hitting the brake, he's heading straight ahead, and he puts yeah. the pedal to the metal, and uh, you know he's uh, he's screaming something which makes no sense, and, yeah. uh, and uh, it, 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 yeah. look, we, we're going to be in a situation whether this is the the final war the final battle or not whether that's down the road or whether it's, it starts soon. I think it's going have, to be so bad we're all going to talk about before the war and after the war. It will yeah. be that profound of an well, event. So I think the war started on September 11th and the well, 11th anniversary is, is coming I'm, up. I'm talking about uh, uh, this next phase. Oh, the next phase, yeah. This next phase is going to get very, very ugly. Uh, and I think unfortunately that it may well happen uh, if Obama thinks that the election is going to go to the Republicans because of Ryan now, 
he's been a green light an early attack to have well, a September surprise. You know, I've also, you know, he, the, I've been told that they found uh, a document that, that proves uh, Obama entered uh, Occidental uh, University as a foreign national. Yeah, I, I, I think that it's very possible. I, I don't know that's that true. I haven't seen it yet. I'm supposed to. Uh, yeah, I've talked to the, uh, to, to the media person for Professor Corsi and others who was uh, Sheriff Pio just in the last few days, and I can tell you that uh, if these documents see the light of day in the regular media and the courts decide to proceed, Obama is sunk and his entire regime is over. Well, he, he could be out of office. You, the vice president would have to take over, literally. Yeah, but it's, Joe Biden is Joe profound. Joe Biden, we, we we should call him, you know, uh, you know, incompetent, jo, uh, you know, Joe Biden. I mean, no, one time be calling he, him President Biden. Yeah, but President That's Biden. Well, we, President Biden, <laughs> during, though. During World War III, President Biden, you know, and he can't, he can't. He I can't don't think he'll that. be around for long. I think he'll be swept out of office here by the next election. Well, uh, uh, the point, uh, but the point I was going to make about that is, if Obama uh, literally is that close to being uh, everything coming out, he may definitely choose to uh, to ignite the fuse because uh, that's what I think worry. is. That's why I think if you're saying if what you're saying is true, which I think it is, and uh, the Israelis are doing this with these special forces elite units, I think they want to do something before the election. It maybe just scare the hell out of us so they can have a great distraction, so they can have a quote war president sitting in the White House and don't change horses in the middle of a war uh, kind of philosophy, so you don't get rid of Obama. But a second term of Obama will look like the first term of Vladimir Lenin. Well, yeah, Obama actually has a plan to basically denude the United States unilaterally of, of almost all of its nuclear weapons. Gee, that would be brilliant. Oh, boy. How, what it would guarantee to make sure that other nations attack you is to take down all your weapons. How crazy is that? You know, uh, <laughs> uh, no, that's beyond crazy. That gives crazy a bad, <laughs> a bad rep. <laughs> That's way beyond crazy. Yeah, that's that's really crazy. Yeah. Well, again, remember I mentioned that Obama. That we had a nuclear uh, scientist on us three years ago who stated that in the early nineties, after Glasnost and Perestroika, he was told the future president would be Obama. That he was a Russian agent and that he would be our next, uh, our future president at some future time. And and how do you know this? He says because he's one of us. The uh, Russian uh, nuclear physicist said. Well, could be. All they said his name is, specifically. He told Barack Obama. I, I, I have heard that story. I have heard that story. I talked to the nuclear expert myself, and I got the corroborating documents to show that it was true. So Barack Obama spent a lot of time go traveling to Afghanistan with the CIA. He's from a spook family. There are probably many of them double agents. Remember, there's interlocking. Communism is just a manufactured entity by the global banks. Communism was a tool by the, it was a tool by the uh, global banks. The Rothschilds, the Warburgs, the Schiffs, etc. Right. Uh, and and it was a, a a way to concentrate power and wealth in their hands. Exactly. And they were also behind uh, Hitler. Yeah. Uh, I mean, these are people. They want war. They organize things. War is a great uh, system for them to increase their wealth and their power and to reorganize society in ways that they want to. And don't forget the ultimate. Uh, they serve not God but Satan, and Satan wants the blood orgy, which is what we call war. By the way, get your uh, Nutridine, Alamax, Element, and, and uh, Immunomax because. West Nile virus is four times normal. We have an explosion of H5, H3N2 V, pandemic flu. And as the population gets weaker from all the stress and radiation from Fukushima, this is the year you're going to start seeing some major excursions of the flu. And uh, as a population, if we have major releases of radiation, you're going to have a massive explosion of illness. And get right with God. That's the first thing. Get prepared. If you think we're exaggerating, don't wait any longer to I try to check it were. out. I wish we were. I wish we were, too. I really don't like all this bad news. But if you get prepared, you're right with God. God will be there with you to get you better.